Just a quick note before this video begins, do not forget to subscribe to my channel, all those people that are watching my videos and taking benefit of me, how dare you not subscribe to me, I am just kidding guys. To all my loyal watchers, click on that subscribe button and turn your post notifications on. Leave a like and comment. Do not forget to share the video. I make sure that I, somehow I can make anatomy as easy as possible for you. For this video, viewer discretion is advised as you are about to study pancreas in a way that you will never be able to remove it from your head. So watch at your own risk. Let's get started. Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today I'm back with another concept that I'm about to make super simple for you which is the pancreas. I've read the pancreas and you've read the pancreas and we all know that this can get quite difficult because it has a lot of relations that you have to remember. But guys, I have finally, after a lot of research, figured out the perfect way that you can memorize all these relations. I just want you all to know that when it comes to relations in anatomy, visualizing is the best technique to learn them. Do not forget to turn on your post notifications. I make an anatomy a piece of cake. Let's get right into it. So here you can see the pancreas. Basically this large structure shaped like a leaf. Important thing I want you to know that the stomach lies about over here, all right, anteriorly. This pancreas is actually lying close to the posterior abdominal wall. Only things that are posterior to the pancreas are either the vessels of the gut, which are the aorta and fear vena cava, and over here will be the kidney. A few things that I'm going to tell you, I want you to keep them in your mind. Stick it like glue into your head because only these things can make it easy for you to memorize all the relations. I really hope you're ready to understand all those relations. I have a way. I want you to take out your book. Get a pencil and draw with me and we are going to talk about the relations of the pancreas. So firstly, let's divide the pancreas into three parts. So first, it has a head. Everything has a head, just like the human body. And then obviously, if there's a head, it has to be a neck. And because there's a neck, there has to be a body. So the interesting thing about the pancreas is going to have a tail as well. So it is a different species probably because it has a tail, unlike us. I want you to remember from the head, there will be projecting a process known as the unkinate process. This is how a pancreas is shaped. Now I want you to remember the tail is directed towards the left side from the right to left. It, it has an upward inclination. What are the functions of the pancreas? It basically has exocrine endocrine function. It basically gives a digestive enzyme inside the intestine it secretes all those enzymes and it all that pancreatic juice all right second function is related to the hormonal production which is the insulin so important now let's talk about different parts of the pancreas so let's talk first about obviously what are we going to start with the protocol is the head of the pancreas i want you to draw one thing and remember this forever that the head of the pancreas is going to be completely related to the duodenum half of the work becomes quite simple. In your relation is the duodenum. I want you to remember duodenum has four parts. First, horizontal. Second, vertical. Third, horizontal again. And then the fourth is vertical again. So remember, this is how the duodenum is in relation to the head of the pancreas. The C-shaped curvature of the duodenum is where the head of pancreas is fixed. And one more thing I want you to remember is the superior inferior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. So the superior pancreaticoduodenal obviously is going to lie over here between the groove of the duodenum and the pancreas superiorly. So right here is the superior pancreaticoduodenal and over here is the inferior pancreaticoduodenal. Can you remember that? Can you draw that with me? Now let's move ahead and talk about the relations. Remember, it's posterior to the head lies a very important structure, the bile duct, because obviously the bile duct is going to come joined with the pancreatic duct and going to open in the second part of the duodenum. So over here, I want to show you that. You can see this green thing right over here the screen thing is the uh, bile duct it's going post it's running posteriorly just behind the pancreas you can't see it because it's gone posteriorly and then you can see it's appearing over here again and then it entering the it's entering with the pancreatic duct this is the main pancreatic duct into your second part of the duodenum there are about three borders in the head the superior border inferior border and right lateral border if I ask you the relation of the superior border, what will you say? Super simple. This is the first part of duodenum and superior pancreatico duodenal artery. Easy. What is the relation of the inferior part? You can see it even over here. It is the third part of the duodenum, the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. Both of these arteries anastomose right over here. So if I ask you what is the right lateral border the relation with the duodenum, the anastomosis of the inferior and superior pancreatico duodenal arteries. And this is the second part of the duodenum. That is just a simple thing that you have to put in your head. Some facts, when you combine those facts with the visual knowledge, you are going to do superb. Now we've talked about the border. What about the anterior and posterior surface? The anterior surface of the head is going to be related 
from above downwards to the first, this first part of the duodenum kind of overlaps on the head a little bit and then comes your colon because don't forget that the colon is running over here because the pancreas is what is going to suspend the colon via the mesocolon. That colon is lying here. So obviously colon is the second anterior surface relation and the jejunum, jejunal coils, which are going to be the small intestine coils. So obviously everything in the abdomen is overlapping with each other. And since pancreas is the posterior most organ, only to think posterior to it is the vessels and the kidney and some posterior abdominal muscles. Most of the organs are going to be lying in anterior surface of the pancreas. So now we know first is the duodenum, then the transverse colon and then the jejunum. Now let's go to the posterior surface of the head. First thing we know is this bile duct, right? Because the bile duct was going in. So posterior surface of the head is related to the bile duct. Posterior surface of the head is also related to a very important vessel, which is the inferior vena cava, which relies to the right of the abdominal aorta, is going to be in relation to the posterior surface of the head. And then the rest of the part of the pancreas will have posterior relation with the aorta. So do not forget that. Let's talk about the uncanate process. Whenever you're thinking about the uncanate process, I want you to remember there are going to be vessels that are going to pass and Anterior to the uncanate process coming from the posterior side of the pancreas. All right, there's going to be a vein and there's going to be an artery. These are the superior mesenteric vessels. I want you to remember this. This is a fact. If you've studied the large vessels of the gut from my videos, you will understand this very well. So, this is the superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric vein. These are going to lie anterior to the uncanate process. Remember that. Imprint it in your mind because this is probably coming in your MCQs. All right, so, superior mesenteric vessels are going to be lying anterior to the uncanate process. Let's go ahead and move to the neck. Neck of the pancreas is where the pylorus of the stomach is going to be lying and then the stomach will start over here. Neck is going to be anteriorly related to the pylorus of the stomach. Posterior surface of the neck of the pancreas is where a very important event is taking place and that is where the superior mesenteric vein is going to meet the splenic vein and they are going to form the portal vein over here you can see that the portal vein has been formed this is the proper hepatic artery and just behind posterior relation to the proper hepatic artery you can see they're going towards this liver this is the portal vein it is formed behind the neck of the pancreas let me just draw that here comes your splenic vein here comes your superior mesenteric and this is the formation of portal vein. So the important things that I want you to remember as facts. Now let's go towards the body. Before I talk about the body of the pancreas, I want you to remember some things by default. Uh, one thing we know is the abdominal aorta is coming at this point. All right. So abdominal aorta is coming. The first branch of the abdominal aorta called the celiac trunk is going to be dating just above this pancreas area. What are the branches of this celiac trunk? Obviously one is a splenic artery, common hepatic artery and a left gastric artery. So you can see the splenic artery is running over here. And we all know that the kidney is lying posteriorly, the kidney suprarenal gland is also lying posteriorly. So now let's talk about relations of the body. Now the body is divided into a superior border, inferior border and an anterior border. So this is the anterior border, all right? This anterior border they've actually removed to show you the pancreatic duct. The surfaces are anterior surface, posterior surface and this inferior surface, all right? Let's talk about the border relation. If I talk about the superior border relation, the first thing you can very obviously see is this splenic artery, but it's also related to the obviously origin of the celiac trunk. Also, you can see the uh, common hepatic artery is also arising. You can see that origin over here. This is the fact that celiac trunk, splenic artery, hepatic artery are coming in relation to the superior border of the pancreas. Just left to the neck in the body, there is this projection called the tuber omentel. Let's talk about the anterior border of the body. If you remember, the transverse mesocolon or the mesentery of the transverse colon was actually suspended by the pancreas. If you didn't remember that before, then memorize it now. Anterior border is giving attachment to that transverse mesocolon and from that in anteriorly is going to be the transverse colon. Inferior border you can see is related to the superior mesenteric vessels on its right end. So everything is making sense. The picture is actually trying to fit into place. For the anterior surface, the anterior surface of the body is going to be related mostly to the lesser sac, to the stomach. Obviously the stomach is lying in front of it because the pylorus has to come to the neck. So obviously the entire stomach is going to be lying here. The lesser sac's posterior boundary is formed by this pancreas. The posterior surface of the pancreas is going to be related to the the, what can you see here the aorta what have i already told you the kidney the left kidney more specifically the left suprarenal gland of the kidney so remember this is splenic vein so all of these is easy to remember inferior surface you can see where the duodenum ends the jejunum begins so duodeno jejunal flexure is or the angle where the duodenum and jejunum meet they're actually meeting at an angle so that flexure is present uh, in relation to the inferior surface of the pancreas if you 
write this much, you'll get the points you need to top. Finally, let's talk about the tail of the pancreas is basically going to be running in the lino-renal ligament in relation to the pancreatic splenic lymph nodes and the splenic artery with the splenic vein all right so now we know that splenic artery is lying superior border and the splenic vein is lying posterior to the pancreas so these are a couple of facts that we've learned and now we have quite a good grip on the topic of pancreas i really hope by now you're feeling confident because you drew with me now let's give a quick revision to the relations of the pancreas i want you all to take a quiz with yourself i want you to pause the video and tell me what comes next pancreas is basically consisting of head neck body tail the head is giving uncanate process. Now, once again, let's talk about the head relations. Superiorly, superior pancreatic duodenal. The first part of duodenum, inferiorly, inferior pancreatic duodenal. The third part of the duodenum. And then on the right lateral, second part with anastomosis. Anterior surface is related from above downwards to the first part of duodenum, then transverse colon, then jejunum. Posterior surface is related to bile duct and the inferior vena cava. Moving to the neck, we all know that the next major uh, landmark is the pylorus of the stomach so anterior surface is the pylorus of the stomach uh, posterior surface is going to be that origin of the portal vein and from the superior mesenteric and splenic vein going towards the body we know that the anterior border is giving attachment to the transverse mesocolon what about the superior border splenic artery celiac trunk hepatic artery tuberomental is also going to be here posterior surface of the body is going to be related to the left kidney left suprarenal gland the abdominal aorta splenic vein what about the uncanate process? Anterior to the uncanate process lie the superior mesenteric vessels, the tail of pancreas lying inside the lino-renal ligament with the relation of the contents of the lino-renal. If the pancreas ever gets inflamed in a clinical known as the pancreatitis, the pain is going to be where, where it is located. It is basically located in the epigastric region and then it's going towards the left hypochondrium as well and mostly kept on the posterior abdominal wall. So mostly the pain of the pancreas is going to be occurring in the epigastrium which will be radiating towards the back that is the characteristic pain of the pancreas all right pain in the epigastrium radiating to the back anything happens to the pancreas if it gets enlarged it is going to cause obstruction of the bile duct why because the bile duct is lying posterior to the pancreas so that can lead to obstructive jaundice because bile will start accumulating in your entire body that will be presented by dark colored urine light colored stool and your body becoming yellow Cancer of the pancreas, most common site is the head of the pancreas. I really hope you understood the topic well today. Thank you so much for watching.